Hi, welcome to the Magnum Steno Club. I'm Mark Kisslingbury, and this is an instructional video entitled Mark Writing. The reason I wanted to show you this video is twofold. First, I wanted you to show how slow my fingers move even when writing a super fast, super dense literary. And secondly, I wanted to show you my steno notes as I'm writing the same thing so that you could see them appear promptly to show that I was right next to the speaker as close to the speaker as I could possibly be. Alright? So first, we will do the finger movement, and I want you to watch that. I will be writing the literary that we practiced on September 28th, that was the inaugural address. <laughs> Begin. Without solicitation on my part, I have been chosen by the free and voluntary suffrages of my countrymen for the most honorable and responsible office on earth. I am deeply impressed with gratitude for the confidence reposed in me, honored with this distinguished consideration at an earlier period of my life than any of my predecessors. I cannot disguise the diffidence with which I am about to enter upon the discharge of my official duties. If the and experienced men who have filled the office of President of the United States even in the infancy of the Republic distrusted their ability to discharge the duties of that exalted station. What ought not to be the apprehensions of one so much younger and less endowed, now that our domain extends from ocean to ocean, that our people have so greatly increased in numbers, and at a time when so great diversity of opinion prevails in regard to the principles and policy which should characterize the administration of our government, well may be the boldest fear and the wisest tremble when incurring responsibilities on which may depend our country's peace and prosperity, and in some degree the hopes and happiness of the whole human family. In assuming responsibility so vast, I fervently invoke the aid of that almighty Ready? Begin. Without solicitation on my part, I have been chosen by the free and voluntary suffrages of my countrymen for the most honorable and responsible office on earth. I am deeply impressed with gratitude for the confidence reposed in me, honored with this distinguished consideration at an... Welcome to the closing session of the Council on Foreign Relations 22nd Annual Term Member Conference with Ray Kurzweil. I'm Nicholas Thompson. I will be presiding over today's session. I'd also like to thank Andrew Goodlock uh, and him and the Anne Marie and Stephen Keller Foundation for their generous support of the CFR Term Member Program. I was a term member a couple years ago. I love this program. What a great event. I'm so glad to be here. I'm also glad to be here with Ray. <coughs> All right, I'm going to read Ray's biography, and then I'm going to dig into some questions about how the world is changing, and uh, he will blow your mind. So, <laughs> Ray Kurzweil is one of the world's leading inventors, thinkers, and futurists with a 30-year track record of accurate predictions. It's true. If you look at his early books, they're like 96% accurate, 98% accurate. Called the Restless Genius by the Wall Street Journal, the Ultimate Thinking Machine by Forbes Magazine, he was selected as one of the top entrepreneurs by Inc. Magazine, which described him as the rightful heir to Thomas Edison. PBS selected him as one of the 16 revolutionaries who made America. Reading his bio, I was upset that he quotes all of my competitors, so I'm going to add a quote from Wired Magazine, which is, his mission is bolder than any voyage to space. Wired Magazine. <laughs> And you also do the dialysis work? I do. Is that full time? What do you mean by full time? Well, it typically means 40 hours a week, something like that. I, I wish I worked 40 hours a week. And so does my family. So the, the question's still out there. Do you work? I, I work a, a, a great deal of hours every week. Okay, how, how, long, how many hours do you work in dialysis? You know, I'm not being glib, but the real answer is I, I see every patient every week and I, I work as long as I need to. It's variable. Sometimes it's many, many hours. Sometimes it's less hours. Approximately how many hours a week do you work in dialysis? I, I don't know. I couldn't quantify that, sir. I, I, don't, I don't keep track of that. Thank you, Mr. President. 
It is shameful for the United Nations that I must stand before you today. It is shameful that this meeting is even taking place. Jerusalem is the holiest place on earth for the Jewish people. It is the capital of the state of Israel, period. It is a fact that simply cannot be disputed. King David declared Jerusalem the city of the Jewish people 3,000 years ago. The from a very low middle class family, my father was a clerk in the forest department. And we were a family of 14 people, uh, my uncles, aunts, their children. We used to live in a small one room kitchen. And the only person who was uh, the earning member was my father, who used to earn 90 rupees per month at that time. Uh, 90 rupees in today's time, if you convert into dollars, is one and a half dollars. Not even that. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Mr. President, Excellencies, the path to peace must be walked with patience to achieve any purpose with others, be they powers or people, patience is needed. The opposite of patience is impatience, the cause and aggravation of conflict. Today I'm going to give you, I didn't really know the audience that I'll be facing, so some of the stuff that I may be talking you may already know, and other stuff may be too much, but hopefully you'll at least pick up something. I'll, I'd like to give you a little bit of my personal view of how this deep learning neural network technology. My neighbor that may be a doctor or a lawyer that doesn't know much about technologies. And because of that, the expectations were really inflated. So, oh, if you can do this. In fact, Stanley Kubrick visited Bell Labs in the 60s and was starting to create science fiction movies. And he said, well, I will talk to these guys to feel, anticipate what's coming. He started CMU in the late 80s. And CMU in the late 80s, and my office mate was to actually a professor at CMU, and then moved to IBM. So I saw some of the early projects. 